Well, hello again, my friends on YouTube. Uh, time for my third video uh, about my collection, my collection update, as I call it. This is part three of three, and luckily I just managed to get room in the frame for all the rest of the knives. Um, as usual, we'll start at the right side over here, and. Uh, this is sort of the leftovers from brands and here we have a lot of brands, just one knife from each. Uh, I mostly buy the way that I, what I think I will like and I, not often do I have the chance to get anything in hand so uh, sometimes I might uh, get a gem and sometimes I might get something decent and Occasionally, I'll get some crap. Let's start with the crap and get that out of the way. This is the Boca Slender. Really, really a piece of crap. I bought it. This is about 19 euro, and uh, you know the Europeans know the <laughs> the the um, prices here. So 19 euro is really cheap. And this indeed is a really cheap knife. Shitty action. Log up at a 200% and a, a lot of... Okay. I don't know if you can hear this. A lot of blade stick. Uh, yeah. I have it, but I wouldn't recommend it even to my worst enemy. Lousy ergonomics. From that... Uh, to an even cheaper knife from China, which is the uh, Lan 910 Plus. I think Senrenmu actually makes them, but this one doesn't have a Senrenmu uh, logo, but uh, they make Lan knives as well. As you just noticed, fabulous action. And uh, this one is really, really a nice knife. I haven't regretted it for one second that I bought it and this one is amazingly f around $15 blade uh, action everything is just wonderful let's not talk too much about what it looks like but uh, the action and everything is amazing and actually I'm so pleased with this that I have another one on order when I get some things in some knives in from China. Then we have a Colt CT591, a China made knife, G2 steel, G10 handle. Uh, I am rather fond of this knife, it is a smaller knife and I generally tend to like bigger knives, but uh, I like this one, the action is uh, smooth and good. One thing, I don't know, uh, this is, I have several D2 knives, but this one is the only one where the blade actually starts to rust, just lying in my pocket. Uh, I have to say, I uh, work and where I work I, I tend to sweat a lot, but still the blade rusts just by lying in my pocket. Um, if this is inherent in D2 steel or this is just the way it is in the cold version, I don't know, but uh, should you like this one, be aware of that it rusts extremely easily. Another gem, the Hans Talisman. This is such a phenomenal life. I can't recommend it enough. Again, rather cheap from China, I think around uh, 25 29 dollars. Has an amazing action. Uh, all sage steel, not the best, but still, uh, that's what cold steel uses as well. And the action is amazing. Fit and finish is so wonderful. This indeed is a wonderful knife. I have another Hans on the way. I hope this will be. Uh, that will be uh, equally good, because this one 
really amazed me. Uh, then a bit of uh, an experiment. Uh, I wanted to buy a, a sort of more expensive knife from China, and this one is uh, actually that's a titanium knife. It's called CH3001, but it has absolutely no markings or anything, and I have to admit to you, it is uh, a bit difficult to find, but it, uh, Try to search CH301 if this is anything interesting for you. Titanium handle, supposedly D2 steel, very very smooth and nice action, centered very well. And you can hear it flips with some authority. Quite a nice knife. Um, fit and finish. Uh, looks a bit edgy but actually ergonomics is quite well are quite well um, what i could say about the finish it is that it is not perfectly anodized uh, i don't think you can see um, the colors in this light but if you get it out in the sunshine you can actually see that this one is anodized in some nice blue colors but they are extremely difficult to see the satin um, uh, coating on the blade is not perfect. It is uh, uh, sort of uh, varies in the thickness. On places you can actually see the metal through it. Not here, but uh, again in the sunshine. Still a very very nice knife and a titanium knife at around 55 euro uh, is amazing. Then sort of the gem of my collection, the Kaiser Sugang, uh, at least a uh, gem price-wise, and uh, it is indeed a gem uh, otherwise as well. I like it quite a lot. Um, this is, uh, without comparison, the most expensive knife in my collection, and I actually wouldn't have been able to buy it if it hadn't been for a group buy and uh, I'm very grateful for the opportunity. It is a titanium handle. Uh, I like this cleaver style very much, a sort of cleaver style or reverse tanto perhaps. Um, really, really ticks so many boxes, as I said in the review of this one. Uh, very, very nice knife indeed. I enjoy this. Enlan. EL10 HCR13 MOV steel. This is actually used in a variety of brands uh, under their own under another brand name, and uh, I have seen uh, Mr. Blade have them, and uh, Boca has them. Uh, I had to use a lot of um, a lot of energy to, to get this smooth. Uh, it, as far as I remember, it is on plastic washers, and I had to. You can get this tool on some of the shiny sides as well, but actually, I had uh, I didn't want to wait for that. I had to make some uh, a tool for myself, and I got it apart, but. Um, it took really a lot of effort to get it even reasonably smooth. Uh, I can flip it, flick it now, but uh, it's not the best. I do like the handle, my Carter handle, uh, sorry, G10 handle, um, but uh, out of the box, not recommended. Same goes for this one. <coughs> the HX Outdoors CD007. Uh, as I said in, in my review of this, handle is so amazingly good. And then they put a blade in that this just seems unfinished. Uh, a bit of a shame, it flicks, flips like a dream. And um, it is smooth. Uh, but the blade is a bit unfinished in my opinion. 
I had, a, had to use a lot of energy to sharpen it a little bit, it was not that sharp, but um, I made, it could have been an amazing knife. Then, oh, the Enlon EW054, a bit of a sort of a swept up plane, maybe even uh, Persian style. Very, very ergonomic knife. Very, very nice indeed. Uh, not very smooth, unfortunately. Also on washers, plastic washers. Uh, I managed to smoothen it up a bit. Um, and I think it goes for most of these Chinese knives that uh, um, some of them come super smooth, super nice. Others you have to work a bit with. Still, I like the shape of this one very much. And we have a very heavy knife. This is not titanium. This is stainless steel. And this is the shred. Uh, might be easy to see uh, very big letters. The shred SCH307. Tanto style. I like like the design, but it is <laughs> extremely heavy. And again, I had to use it very sturdy. I had to use a lot of energy and time to make it reasonably smooth. I like that uh, you just can use, you can just use an ordinary screwdriver for for adjusting the pivot. Seems a bit odd that you they use Torx on the other screws, but. Uh, at least you can adjust the pivot with even a coin perhaps. And as you can see I managed to make it reasonably smooth. And it is a very heavy, very sturdy knife. A little a little gem here. The San Renmo 7010. Uh, resembles some American knife. I guess much smaller and a little too small for me, but still, if I have to go someplace where I don't want to be considered murdery, then this is not the worst. Nice little knife, and I know some of you might like this one more than a lot of the other heavy knives. Then Mikkel Willemsen, a Danish designer, which makes me a bit proud. Uh, only way to get some one of his designs was to get this Lansky Urban Tactical, designed as I said by Willemsen, for 40C steel, and it even came with a. I can just find it. It even came with a sharpening tool. A very different design, but I like it, and as I said, reasonably priced. The only way to get a Willemsen design at a reasonable price. Very, very economic, really a nice knife, and uh, it has grown on me. It, uh, I didn't like it very much at first, but it certainly uh, grew on me. I find it more and more interesting. Then another one I sort of bought along another since I had to pay uh, the same amount of uh, shipping. Very, very big and very, very heavy. Uh, the pocket picker, as uh, I mentioned in two videos, as Nick Shabazz would say, very, very big blade. And this is the hallmark. Bad plot. Again, not very smooth out of the box. I managed to smoothen it up, but it is over the top in so many ways. Very, very large belly. Very big. As I said, I had to smoothen it up. Very, very heavy. I know some of you will like it. Um, 
I think, as I said, it is perhaps a bit over the top, but still. The rest, all these are old uh, slip joints, do you call it that? Uh, more classic knives, our slip joints don't lock. <coughs> this Swiss Army knife is a genuine slip joint. Uh, the, all these in this side are from my earlier days collecting. And then the knife law, laws were changed, so locking knives, locking folders were forbidden. But still, I had this one, this uh, model in the army. Uh, <laughs> not very embroidery, uh, not very army style, I guess, but it was an amazingly good tool compared to the crap that we had before this one. Uh, it has a interesting lock here on the side and the sort of civilian version or the version that uh, wasn't issued as it was in the Danish army work was called um, uh, Swiss army knife adventurer or Vignor Victorinox adventurer sorry and then just showing very quickly a little this, I guess this would uh, be uh, some sort of switch plate in uh, other versions, but in this version there's a lock, lock, lock back. Same with this one. Really just working knives, no brand or whatsoever. This one has a special place in my heart. I bought it in uh, Namibia and Africa when I was a UN soldier there. So sort of memories more than I don't use it that much anymore and yes this is some Pakistani knives knife uh, really not that good as you can see a bit of blade play perhaps yeah <laughs> really not a good knife I just kept them for yeah historical purposes and then last but not least my very happy Gerber, Gerber Flick multi-tool and the Flick is that you can open the tweezers like this and then of course it has knife or uh, that's a knife and it even locks so this would in fact also have, have been illegal in the old days here in my country and I'll see if I can close it. Gerber flick. Then, <coughs> last but not least, this little guy, <laughs> actually not that cheap. I got it as a Christmas present from my son. And as you can see, he had some intention with this one to show me. Uh, and you can imagine that this is one of my absolute favorite knives well <coughs> this video was, wasn't supposed to be 18 minutes long but uh, I rambled along and uh, I hope you got something out of it I found it boring just to sit around and tell you the name of each knife uh, was funny to give you a little bit of history about some of them and with that, and before I waste any more of your time, uh, if you like this, please leave a like, uh, comment, subscribe, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.